No Indian road trip feels like a road trip until you've dodged a few trucks, large or small, laughed at the signs on the back of trucks, or get startled at the sounds of their loud and odd honks. But the trucks on our roads have changed as much as the roads they drive on, going from bulky and mildly terrifying to sleek and quiet. But it's not just the design and technology in the trucks and commercial vehicles that has changed. The buyer and how he or she is buying has changed too. And as I sit down today with Shubran Shu Singh, who is the Chief Marketing Officer of Tata Motors Commercial Vehicles Business Unit, and Mohit Joshi, Chief Executive Officer of Avas Media Group, these are some of the questions I want to ask. How has the commercial vehicle buyer changed? How do they make their decisions? How is the brand and agency reimagining media and marketing after so many years of driving the brand and business? So let's get straight into it and find out. Welcome to the show, gentlemen. It's lovely to have you here. Great to be here. Thank you, Delshar. So, Shubhranshu, I'm going to kick, kick off with a question to you. You have been, of course, in the business a long time. You mm -hmm. have worked across categories. You've worked in broadcast media. You've worked in FMCG. And then, of course, uh, financial services as well. And then you, almost in the thick of the pandemic, you joined Tata Motors. Uh, as the CMO, running the commercial vehicles business unit. Tell me, what were some of the goals that you set for yourself at that point in time? How far along in that journey are you in terms of, you know, some of the things that you set for yourself? And give me the highlights for, for starters. The mandate was to build a world-class marketing organization. Uh, Tata Motors is a pioneer. It's an industry leader. It's built the category ground up. So there was nothing in terms of brand renovation that was immediately required. What was required was uh, a more evolved storytelling, creating multiple facets in the consumer journey that establish our leadership well to make sure our product innovations are you know, brought out alive to the consumers in very interesting and engaging ways. And one of the things that was required was to structurally prepare ourselves for it. So we were able to create a brand manager-led organization. We were able to create pivotal positions that create content, as well as many other facets and features of products being brought alive through the marketing role. So that was one key highlight. The second one was, you know, we were largely invested in below-the-line promotions and on-ground engagement with consumers. And while that was being done on a very large scale, uh, it was time for us to experiment and go boldly into the digital domain. So I think that's another thing we did. We refurbished our web identities. We were able to create uh, digital engagement with intenders. And today, almost uh, 15 to 20 percent of our sales across all product lines uh, comes to us via digital means. So that's another big thing that happened. We had lots of uh, data coming in. We had a culture of insight um, mapping. We had a culture of research. But then again, how do you simplify all of that learning in consumer relatable ways? Uh, so we experimented with not going through conventional agencies, but uh, pitching all our campaigns out, uh, finding interesting partners to work with, changing the narrative through influencers. And those influencers are content creators, but also others. Uh, and all of these things have worked very well in the last two years, and I would say for me, it's a very, very uh, steep curve in terms of learning and appreciating how pivotal commercial vehicles is to India's economy. Speaking of partners, Shubrancho, you have one sitting right here next to you. Mohit, let me come to you and ask you, of course, Tata Motors is one of the country's most prestigious accounts and one of the biggest advertisers. Um, essentially, what is the current mandate for you uh, from Tata Motors? And what is the crux of your strategy in terms of the media that you plan and just overall, just building the business and brand? What's the crux of it? Great. So uh, they are one of our leading, uh, I would say, partners. And we've, the partnership has been over the last 10 years, 10 plus years, and three plus years since Shuvranshu has moved in. And uh, uh, the mandate is for the commercial vehicles. And we are managing the entire offline, online uh, uh, business for them. Uh, if you look at any big brand like Tata Motors, uh, there is a huge portfolio that they have. and 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 the objective and tasks of each of the portfolios is different. And within their portfolio also, there are different brands, which are in different stages of their uh, brand journey. And we, as their partners, have to chart 
a plan for each of those brands, depending on which part of the purchase uh, uh, brand preference journey are they in. Mm -hmm. you, have, uh, you have an ACE, which is a leading product, which everybody knows about. There pr probably the, the consideration is what we uh, uh, require, but you have a Yodha and others where probably an awareness or some bit of cajoling at the start is required. So the, the, the overall strategy is dependent on the, the specific brand or the specific product or the specific campaign that of we are course. planning for them. Mm -hmm. But at a larger level, uh, as you know, Havas build, builds meaningful brands for its uh, clients. And this is one very important and very meaningful brand that we are creating with Shivranshu and his team over the last 10 years. Mm -hmm. And uh, meaningful brands are built through meaningful media. And that's what we invest in. So whatever we do is, is, uh, uh, is something that the consumer connects with. Mm -hmm. And that's uh, the partnership as it goes forward. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Uh, Shubranshu, both you and Mohit, of course, have mentioned one thing, which is the customer journey, mm -hmm. right? Um, let me perhaps ask you something, you know, I mean, this may sound a little sort of simplistic, but um, how has advertising to, to the sort of the commercial vehicles buyer changed? You know, of course, we know that, uh, you know, there are the logistic companies, but, but say, for instance, okay, if you're, if you're a person, say, in Bihar or Maharashtra, you've sold a piece of land and you've got some 10, 12 lakh, um, how does he know that he has to come to Tata Motors? You know, just tell me how that journey has changed for the buyer. Mm -hmm. So when you say commercial vehicles, it is not one but many product lines. So it would be a little simplistic to just answer for one intender. But the kind of intender that you have pointed out is also a very, very important uh, customer for us, especially in the volumetric sense. So if you see small commercial vehicles, we call this category the first time buyer or the first time user, mm -hmm. who is largely looking for employment, but finds that an entry into trucking could be a viable alternative to doing a job and a paying one at that because as an entrepreneur, he can earn a very decent uh, income every month. Now, it is not difficult for them to know or source uh, information about where to buy the trucks or where to buy a pickup. What is important is for them to know what application they're going in for and therefore which model or which variant or which vehicle to choose. Mm -hmm. uh, in small town India or even in large cities, uh, Tata Motors is the most accessible brand. So for them to figure out the way to get to our dealer uh, is, is not a difficult thing at all. What we are striving to do is to handhold them right from when they are not considering the purchase, as in making sure first there is fame and awareness and then comes the persuasion. Mm -hmm. So it's important for them to realize uh, that there are many other dimensions to being an entrepreneur as a trucker not only buying the vehicle, but servicing, spare parts, ease of access, uh, digitalization, you know, how do you get the right freights? What's mm -hmm. the sentiment at work? All of these things need to be in our storytelling. And so that when A, they become motivated to do this, and more importantly, when the aha moment arrives, uh, they make uh, the right choice, which is obviously to buy a Tata vehicle. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the, the, Awareness piece is critically important yes. also because it's a large portfolio. Mm -hmm. But as Mohit was mentioning, consideration is equally important. Obviously, you cannot uh, sell or you cannot relate to somebody who is not aware of you. So we are constantly investing in sales, mm -hmm. driven uh, information provision, but also in awareness creation. And digital media is something that's giving us a joy on both the fronts. Mm -hmm. It helps us to bring alive our content in multiple languages across multiple social platforms and other places, but also you're just a click away from a potential sale. So both the things get uh, achieved by driving digital as a primary vehicle of mm -hmm. our outreach. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we'll get to, we'll dig a little deeper into that because I know you all also have some uh, interesting products that and services that you've launched, something mm -hmm. like Fleet Edge, for instance, or even the Tata OK app. Uh, but before I get into that, uh, Mohit, let me just, uh, Chubranch, of course, men mentioned the digital piece, right? Uh, give me your sort of perspective on how sort of the media mix has changed, you know, uh, in terms of e even even ATL and BTL, you know, how, uh, how is that sort of shift happening? Where is it happening? Give me sort of the overview of it. Sure. 
as uh, Subhranshu said, you know, digital has become absolutely critical for us today. I am proud to say that we are selling trucks online. So, you know, uh, that's something that, uh, that, that we are really proud to be doing. And it's become a case study for us globally because truck normally was not expected to be a product that one would be able to uh, to, mm -hmm. to sell uh, online. But as, as uh, Subhranshu said, the way we have used digital over a period of time, both for the top of the funnel awareness creation, as well as the middle of the funnel creation of, uh, of, of uh, uh, you know, intent. And then finally, the bottom of the funnel conversion has been, has been a unique case study in itself. Mm -hmm. uh, as you know, India is still driven by television, while digital has become the number one uh, medium uh, last year. Uh, so we do use uh, a mix of all the other touch points which are important for us. Television has its own role in crea creating awareness and at times, you know, you need to be on, on cricket for creating that impact. So depending again on the kind of uh, brand, product, mm -hmm. communication that we are launching, one would use television to create that impact awareness. We also use uh, once in a while uh, uh, newspapers because you know they have their own role in creating a launch impact at times and you know rel relatable news. But digital is clearly the lead medium, mm -hmm. and uh, we are using it as I said for creation creation of awareness through YouTube and all the other uh, domains. We are doing a lot of programmatic mm -hmm. uh, uh, stuff on digital and. And, and uh, also using a lot of influencers. The influencer piece has become very, very critical in today's day and age. Uh, the consumer media choices are known. Mm -hmm. I mean, the way in which we approach them. I think what's changed is the consumer behavior, yes. particularly in terms of doing their due diligence. So the exertions that they would have made otherwise in terms of physically going across and meeting people and so on has now increasingly shifted to the mobile phone. Mm -hmm. So it's not even just the internet. It's mobile accessed right. internet. And so there is a large initiative within the business to see how we can use AI and you know general intelligence and conversational models to drive that intimacy even further and faster. Uh, so far as television is concerned as a genre, we are using that primarily as a reach builder. And so therefore, cricket obviously comes in in a big way. Um, we have been on bilaterals of late. Uh, we do try and do a virtuous mix of many genres, so it's mm -hmm. general entertainment, impact properties, news, um, and other specific genres in language markets, such as music programs, etc. Yeah. Largely our audience in terms of the primary buyer is a young male, uh, and therefore we try and create supplemental audiences by going to niche persuasions. But by and large we try and do a robust mix of all available genres on television. Uh, both keeping an eye on the wallet and also on the maximizing of reach. Mm -hmm. So that's what we've been doing. By the way, it's not, it's not very different when you're planning your social media strategies nowadays either. It's, it's largely a reach-driven plan. Um, and what we have to do from there is to segue very quickly into a more evolved storytelling. And that's mm -hmm. where the influencer piece comes in. We have had almost about 12 crore views in this year with about two and a half thousand videos. Mm -hmm. Uh, what began as a very fledgling effort with some five influencers has grown into a cadre of about 250. Wow. So we are now doing not only product A versus product B or what are the pro features of product A, we are also doing the ecosystem narrative, you know, come to our service center, come to our dealership, uh, exposing what's happening inside our manufacturing locations. Giving, giving them a, you know, a, a deeper sense of quality, yeah. both quality of purpose, quality of product, and quality of ecosystem. Mm -hmm. And building a community of sorts. And That's right. And completely opening up the brand to everyone. That's exactly mm -hmm. right. Because generally speaking, the presumption is that you know, when it's a commercial vehicle, people are not emotionally involved. Right. It's only a functional benefit. But that's not really true. They are emotionally involved in many indirect and direct ways. Because at the end of the day, like I said, you know, it's a matter of subsistence. Their survival depends on the business that they run on those wheels. Mm -hmm. So there is a deep bond and an attachment. You mentioned that the buyer is still largely young males. Uh, have you seen any change in terms of women, you know, and uh, whether they are large commercial vehicles, smaller vehicles? I mean, are you seeing any sort of change happening there? Yes, I think, I mean, from what I know, uh, there's great positivity about the possibility of women being in 
the business. Mm -hmm. Whenever such a case comes up, it is widely celebrated and gets a lot of media that's traction. That's true. Yeah, it uh, goes I've viral. Also, yeah, that's right. And I've also seen, uh, you know, the the market goes bottom up. And so, you know, when we when we launched the Ace in 2005, it created this whole market of mini trucks, mm -hmm. where earlier there were three wheelers and other means of last mile transport. And in that segment, I think there is an increasing uh, prevalence of women also opting in. But I would say that there is a lot, lot more to do. I think there's a lot of distance to cover. Mohit, let me just come to you first, because of course we're seeing a lot of media investment company like yours uh, really investing behind stepping up their capabilities driven by uh, AI, generative AI specifically. Uh, uh, what is Avas doing right now and how are you sort of implementing some of those things for a brand like Tata Motors and a large business like Tata Motors? Yes, so uh, AI is definitely uh, been there for a very long time. It's just that after chat GPT came in, generative AI became, uh, you know, something that that uh, that became, a, uh, you know, an everyday discussion. Uh, but you're right, generative AI is something which is here to stay. And uh, we as an agency, as a as a, as a media agency, uh, are, are also very uh, uh, logically looking at that. We have partnered with uh, 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 with Adobe at a global level, and uh, we are. Uh, trying to create an AI council at a global level where uh, we are trying to understand the implications of AI because you know what is currently happening is we are not very clear. Everybody talks about AI and you have mid-journeys of the world uh, giving you uh, 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 outputs but you really don't know how it is going to change uh, the entire narrative in a big way. As a media agency tomorrow I could have my, uh, my Bark uh, software creating the consumer cohorts uh, by, by, by just uh, listening to what I'm saying and that would be generative AI in a very different way. So generative AI is just, it's the tip of the iceberg. We as agencies have already started partnering with, uh, with some of the leaders in this category mm -hmm. and we are trying to see how it's going to evolve over a period of time. My personal view is that it's going to be always a mix of man and machine. Shibranshu, of course, you are a huge proponent of, you know, ca not be playing catch up, but actually sort of being ahead of the curve. And you've been writing about uh, AI technologies as well. Mm -hmm. And from a marketing perspective too, uh, tell me what is, going to, what is going to happen? You know, this new frontier that everyone's exploring and uh, what's, what are you doing at Tata Motors? Uh, what are some of the key use cases that have worked for you, for instance? Mohit correctly said there is a natural gestation period after which we will know how much of that impact is here to stay. But what is interesting for people, and I am noticing this in everyday consumer lives, and even we go to many other categories as everyday consumers and not as professional marketers, is that the, the intimacy that it builds and this artificial general intelligence and particularly the conversation ability mm -hmm is magical for consumers. And so I think what's happening is, whether it's chat GPT or BARD or as, you know, the large language models like Llama, et cetera, give now marketeers and brands the tools to be able to uh, have qualified and unqualified conversations mm. and assist people in their journeys. And that's, I think that is true of customer facing as well as inside the organization processes that can be really magically transformed. Having said that, I think narrow intelligence may actually be more fruitful than artificial general intelligence because you know today when I came here and I was on Google Maps mm -hmm. or if I'm typing something and you know the sentence is being prompted for me to complete to be completed that is also artificial intelligence right. at work we just don't perceive it that way so I think a lot of what it's like it's it's going to be a bit like an iceberg what is mm -hmm. below the surface is equally or maybe more foundational than what is apparent and in the public eye I'm actually, as a marketeer, more hungry and keen and greedy for artificial imagination mm -hmm. than I am for artificial intelligence mm -hmm. per se. You know, so I think it's, it's in that domain, you know, the creative eye, what new forms and expressions get built, that will be quite transformational and I'm waiting for it to be commercially more and more available. I'm not a doomer, I don't believe we are all done. You know, no humans will have any worthwhile jobs to do. I mm -hmm. think it will be a multiplicative factor Certainly, some of these uh, new players will emerge to be in the league of big tech. Mm -hmm. They will become humongous corporations in their own right. 
And just as 20, 30 years ago, you know, both Mohit and I were in the business very much. Mm -hmm. uh, life didn't revolve around, let's say, a Facebook or a Google or something. And now it's very center stage when media planning is concerned. Uh, likewise, I feel a large section of the AI platform piece will come into the heartland of media planning. Mm -hmm. But, you know, life will evolve. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. we will stay ahead, I feel. Ultimately, not being insular in any fashion, essentially. Right. That's right. Uh, but let me close this conversation, uh, Shubhran Chumoit. Your quick take on, you know, we are, of course, in the new year already. Um, uh, tell me what is in the works uh, quickly, if you could tell me what's coming up, you know, in terms of what Tata Motors is doing, in terms of campaigns or any sort of big ticket ideas that you have. The year is looking very good. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, the last year... Uh, saw a little bit of a dip towards after to, uh, during Diwali and post that. Uh, we've started the year really well. Uh, uh, quarter one is going to be uh, very, very, uh, I would say, uh, above the expectation. And uh, I personally feel that uh, being an election year, the overall addicts is going to increase uh, significantly this year. Digital will continue to grow. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and, uh, and, and television, uh, as I always say, television and digital are fusing together because of the CTV uh, right. uh, reality. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have started uh, building plans, which are not TV plans, but audiovisual plans, because you have to connect with the consumer across all the audiovisual platforms, whether it is linear TV, connected TV, OTTs, YouTube, wherever it is. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's, that's the evolution of uh, the, the um, uh, media or consumer planning that's happening. Uh, in my view, 2024 is going to be uh, mm, uh, a rock solid year for the industry, uh, something that we've been looking for over a period of time. And, and, and uh, I expect the same for uh, Tata Motors as well. But that's very interesting. The entire language of media is changing, right? You're talking about audiovisual now versus, say, yes. TV or digital or, or print. Uh, Shubhranshu, your quick take, 2024, uh, what are you looking forward to? What's your outlook? So far as Tata Motors plans concerned, you will see more... Uh, you know, signature campaigns. Mm -hmm. I want one idea to live and breathe through below the line promotions, outdoors, in print, on radio, on television, and also in digital uh, domains. You will see more owned properties on digital. We want to promote our websites. We want to draw the traffic and build a community. We will continue the stellar work that we've been doing on influencers. But more importantly, we are investing a huge deal in mining, shaping, and working on data. data. You see, if if media and particularly media is a you know media planning, media buying, it's a it's a science as much as it is an art, and I would say it's more of a science than art. There has to be an arrow of progress, right? If I or you go to a hospital today, we expect that it will be better than what it was in the 1960s. You travel on an aircraft, it's bound to be safer and better than it was in the 1960s. How can media planning be exactly the same as it was in the mm -hmm. 1960s, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, what's changed between 2023 and 2024 is what sense we have made of 2023 that goes prima facie into briefs that we give them. Let's not repeat the mistakes. Let's experiment more. Let's fail early. But be, be sure to invest more in driving things that have worked mm -hmm. and we know have worked. So we want to make those green shoots grow into tall oaks, basically. That's the idea. So hopefully 2024 will be a productive year for us from you know, media investments into brand growth and progress. Well said. Well, thank you so much for your time, gentlemen. It was lovely chatting with you and hope to catch up soon. Thank you. Lots to talk about. Thank you for thank having you. us. Bye. Thanks thank for you. having us.